Hi everyone. Um, my name is Sarah Nally, um, and I am originally from Monaghan. I've moved back to Monaghan. Um, and about, I'm going to say about six months ago, I was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer. Um, and about two years ago, um, we're going to say before lockdown, I was suffering with rec what's called recurring uh, UTIs, so rec um, urinary tract infections, which is quite common uh, amongst women and men. Um, nothing, no alarm bells really went off. Um, aside from on two occasions, I required, required emergency antibiotics in hospitals in the north of Ireland. On them two occasions, I was sent home with an IV of antibiotics. Um, at the start of last year, I'm going to say January 2022, my health did deteriorate. And within the space of a few months, I had four more urinary tract infections, again being treated with antibiotics and you'd think my voice would be heard. <laughs> so during that time, of course, I couldn't go in and get antibiotics myself. These were prescribed. In June 2022, which isn't so long ago, um, I begged my GP, just to note this is in the North of Ireland, um, to be heard. I begged for a gynecological appointment, and I was refused. Um, the basis on this refusal was because they wanted me to go back on the contraceptive pill, um, which fundamentally would mask these symptoms, which I was on prior. Um, and having been, like I work it in research, I kind of knew I was a bit of a know-it-all to this GPs. Um, and I was refused. And I left that appointment feeling somewhat like a clown, to be honest, um, and very, very upset. Um, last, so August then, I got my first big girl job in the University of Limerick. Um, I was delighted to move down and in the space of maybe three weeks I got very, very ill. So during my time teaching um, I would need to get into bed at three o'clock. My health was really deteriorating. So I went to a doctor on call there and the health care I received was phenomenal. Absolutely fantastic. In the space of three days in that gynaecological ward in the University Hospital of Limerick, I received the best care in the world, to be honest, um, and they really did save my life. Um, so it was fantastic. Um, they found a tumour the size of a baby's head um, in my left ovary and another tumour in my right ovary. And these had been simmering two years. And if my voice had been heard two years ago, I would have kept my womanhood. I would have kept a lot of what cancer has taken from me. So why Vicky? So in Limerick, when I was in hospital, like the health care was phenomenal. But Vicky's name was being thrown around. And my ignorance at the time, because I was living in Derry, focused on my studies, focused on getting through uni, I didn't really pay much attention to social media down south. Obviously, that's due to myself, but my mum, my family, everyone knew Vicky's name. And the day before I was being diagnosed, I turned to Vicky's story and I read all about her. And in that time, I knew my diagnosis before the doctor was ever going to say, you know, you've ovarian cancer. I knew, put two and two together. I knew it in my gut that there was something wrong. Um, so from Vicky's bravery, her sheer determination, that has had a lasting impact, not only on my life, but on my friends and family as well. And in that hour, you know, when you're f in the face of adversity, that positivity and the strength that she's shown isn't easy at all. Um, and it's so admirable. Um, it was brilliant, you know. So why am I speaking here today so raw? Well, 12 weeks ago, I had to go through huge treatment um, and I had life-changing cytoreductive surgery, which basically eliminates any cancer in my body. Huge surgery, especially for a 26-year-old girl um, or woman. Why am I speaking here? Because people need to know, particularly we need to start off in secondary schools. Our secondary school boys and girls need to know not only about cancer, but they need to know about chronic illnesses, diseases, and everything that is prevalent in our society. My sister's a teacher, and she can categorically say 
that boys and girls do not have a notion of what's going on until they leave school. And that's diabolical. We need to do more. We must do more. We need to educate not only our children, but our GPs, our healthcare services. Although I received absolutely phenomenal care in Limerick and in the Matter Hospital, there's a lot of GPs and other healthcare professionals that are dis would dismiss you of your age or of your gender or whatever the sense. So we really must do more. So I'm just going to finish on a note that Vicky has so clearly articulated that it has resonated with me throughout my whole entire journey. I don't want your apologies. I don't want, I want action and I want change. Thank you.